I just managed to make a video 19 minutes long. So I've got to redo it. Bum. So, I've done a video on hydrostatic transmissions before, but unfortunately, I used a transmission with missing parts, and I can't really describe something. Um, I can't describe how something works by doing this. That's how it moves. So, I've drawn it instead. This is... This is actually, I'm pretty impressed with how this has come out, I was expecting it just to be a doodle of lines and scribble. But, it's relatively simple to understand, one, hopefully with any luck. So, this is your the body of your transmission, okay? Input shaft, if you couldn't figure that out, you shouldn't be watching this video. This here is the main housing of the uh, actual hydrostatic unit. This is your input filter the actual pump, a, hydro, a hydraulic pump, piston pump and then a hydraulic motor well this unit here in itself is a hydraulic motor um, so what we're going to start off with is what happens when you start it up so you start your tractor you have to put your foot on the clutch of course to start it and take your foot off input shaft is now turning and this little piston thing you see here that's a thingy is now spinning around at a million miles an hour doing practically fuck all what it's doing is turning around the surface of it touching this thing is actually the piston itself is not turning but in its little cylinder but the unit that that is in this thing here is turning that's the input shaft coming through that there's the there they're the splines which connect the input shaft to that badly drawn yes i know there isn't just one piston in this, of course. There's, I think, five to six pistons in that. Five to six pistons in that, or is it six to eight pistons? Oh yeah, I think it's like six to eight pistons in that. This one here is actually bigger than that, which helps give you your uh, final gear ratio. Which, actually, that there will spin about... This here will only spin... I reckon that there will spin about... Uh, I'm trying to think. That there, well, that there will actually spin only a very small amount slower than what that is because there's like a hundred tooth um, crown gear on your differential and there's a tiny little pinion gear here not really a pinion gear but it's a tiny little gear on here which has six to eight teeth on it so it has a humongously uh, down rated gear ratio from there on and this here is still spinning very fast if you were to replace your transmission the input shafts on your transmission I mean the drive shafts on your transmission for and then have where the differential would go a sprocket and then on here to have a sprocket which means you would actually have to cut up your housing to make it fit but you could then in theory have a hydrostatic um, racing tractor you'd have absolutely no torque so you could expect putting your foot on the uh, What's it very quickly? It would probably stall your engine. Uh, the belt would slip like a son of a bitch. You could snap um, the shafts, which go into here, come out of here. Bugger these two gaskets, by the way. There, these big black things I've put in. They're representing the steel and copper gaskets, gaskets which go, which se which separate this machined steel cylinder between the cast aluminium body. And we'll start off with what happens when you put your foot on the pedal so this piece here has got a dome on it that allows it so when you put your foot on the pedal forwards or reverse it can move from either side in there and because the, the input shaft has to go through it you can't have a circular hole in here and then have the input shaft going through it because if you put your foot on the pedal it's just going to fail and that's not going to move very far if at all so these dotted lines here represent a um, kind of an oblong sh um, cutout in the middle so it can move from either side without hitting that so that is now spinning and this here is rubbing against there you put your foot on the pedal and this here is going to move this way only in this direct diagram if it's uh, if you've taken apart your transmission don't expect it just to move that way because I've said so the chances are it could move that way um, this will be connected up they're usually like a little slot like two prongs with a or a small pocket that a ball joint slips into and then when you take the top of it off it just slips out the top quite happily um, 
So let's push that down and it's now running an angle so that that's how fast you want to go. Now that piston there is having to slide up and down this because that's not that's fixed by the pressure on your foot. That here that that piston can't go sideways or anywhere else besides up and down in the cylinder as it turns. There's a spring to push it back up when it's at the higher end and the pressure of it being on here pushes it back down. And what's happening now, so your piston, this is spinning around, you've got that pushing down and inside that piston is actually filled with hydraulic fluid or ATF fluid you could put in it, gear oil, but if you put gear oil in it um, it will work but it will it be worn, it will be extremely lumpy and horrible to drive slow bog the engine down when it is cold because gear oil is a lot thicker then once it warms up it will be good as gold I should, I should think so but um, things like that things like gear oil would need changing a lot more regularly so automatic transmission fluid is probably best to put in one of these it is now so it's coming down this gradient here and it's compressing this piston into this housing there's a little hole at the bottom along with uh, lots of little galleries and things which are in there and this uh, uh, gasket here is actually synchronized with those galleries so whenever when this is at a certain point in time any one of the five pistons in here will be either sucking up the fluid or pressurizing it out of here they're always doing something while that is turning and it's per and you've got your foot on the pedal and is now pushing it out through this high pressure um, like gallery inside this housing and pushes it into this one this one here has more than that so automatically uh, changes the gear ratio and it pushes against this now because this here is not a flat edge it's at an angle it can't just stay there it actually it has to push its way up so as it's going on it's actually kind of doing this and it's pushing out at the same time so it has to the only way it can push out is by re revolving this cylinder and like that one this one also has galleries and things which correspond to holes and like gateways and other kinds of crap in this uh, gasket it also acts like a valve as it moves past it and then the holes don't line up anymore it closes it as simple as that so it has, once it comes up to the top and it has to start moving down again it has to push that fluid out and using those all those little galleries and holes and things it will then push it out of here it's not going to be simply there's a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom the holes are actually elongated so it has a long it has a further distance that it can receive oil and push oil out again where it then pushes it up through into the pump again but thing is those there are not completely oiled out tight because of the pressures they're running at same as that there's oil is going to come out of there some way or another because there's no uh, like an oil seal. There's nothing around that. It's just a perfectly machined f f um, finish on there. But so well, some oil will leak out, especially when it's an older transmission. But when that oil comes out, it's got to be replaced with something like I don't know something like the air lurking around inside the housing. Now we all know what it's like when you get air in your brake lines. They don't work no more. So, uh, if you wasn't to have any way of getting fluid in there, some, it would sometimes it would jerk along, and eventually what would happen is you'd be driving along quite happily. You wouldn't drive for very long before it judders a little bit, then stops dead. It just would not work anymore. So you have to have fluid to be able to get back in. So here's this grey thing. is now a filter. What that does is it allows fluid to go in up here into this tube in there so once it's actually pissed out oil everywhere it's allowed to suck up extra fluid to replace the fluid which had leaked out now the problem is when you want to go in reverse again automatically fluid's going to be going out of there and all it's going to do is bypass the motor for the housing again it's just going to pump it go and piss it straight out so to change that you put, you put a check valve in so when you're going back when you want to go backwards the fluid comes rushing out of here, goes into your pump and it will also go down here but it pushes a little ball bearing against a machine seat which will stop the fluid from being able to go out into the housing 
and then pushes it into here, it goes out, through the, uh, which, which is now the exit, we'll come out here, back into the pump, where that's now the inlet, and we pumped again.